Hi everyone, this is Pete here. So recently I saw a few uh, local YouTubers and bloggers talking about, you know, owning real estate versus investing in the market. And I think the general consensus is that, hey, you shouldn't be buying a property or a condo. You should really, really go and save up and, and invest everything in the stock market. Now, I just want to provide a different perspective, right? A differing view. I'm not saying they are wrong, but I'm just saying that... Um, it doesn't suit everybody's situation, okay? So let me explain to you uh, what I actually mean. So first and foremost, let's compare real estate versus the stock market uh, to begin with, right? So in terms of uh, average return, right, you can see that on, on average, the average return uh, for the real estate is about 4 to 5%, right? So to 6%, so that's not fantastic on a year-to-year -year basis, where stock market traditionally does provide a much higher return. So I think this one definitely... Uh, most of the local bloggers got it right, right? And they also say that, oh, you know, because there is a leverage for real estate, so interest rate matters. And I agree. I, I do think that is true because the stock market, unless you took on margin to invest, uh, interest rate generally doesn't matter to you. And what's another downside for real estate is that, you know, there's maintenance fee to be paid uh, every month, right? Whereas stock market, there's no maintenance fee. And real estate is a high friction kind of purchase, right? When you buy, there's stamp duty. And if you buy two, there's additional buyer stamp duty, where stock market there isn't, okay? But there are also some pros for the real estate. For example, real estate in any situation, let's say, uh, comes to a point whereby uh, you don't want to stay there anymore or there's some issues with your mortgage payment and you need some help to finance the payment, you can actually rent it out, right? And in fact, in some cases, if you buy the good property, right, that can rent out really well, sometimes the property kind of pays for itself, right? So end up the investment uh, could be really good in terms of returns. Whereas stock market, you generally can't rent out your stocks. Um, I mean, of course, there are some ways you can do it using options. But in this case, I'll just stick to normal stock investing. You can't really rent it out. Okay. The next thing I, I felt that both uh, the bloggers that I, I watched, right? I, just, I don't want to mention names, but I, I think they kind of missed the point, right? Is that real estate is a, also a roof over your head. Okay. I'll elaborate more on that. Uh, later on but just remember right real estate not just as an investment but it's also a place that you get to stay in and enjoy right uh, versus stock market you can't really stay in your stock portfolio can you okay and last but not least of course i admit this is really more of a lifestyle choice which is very subjective okay but i i think it is also not fair for some of the the uh the people to say that hey joe uh, you should really save and scream, save, say, stay in the in the poorest condition you can tolerate. Then you save, 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 save. Then you invest all in the stock market. Then maybe 20 years later, wow, you get your pot of gold. Then you get to enjoy yourself. But guys, um, sometimes uh, it's also important to kind of enjoy yourself now, all right? Because if you're investing in the way that you are suffering all the time, ask yourself, how long can you maintain it? Okay, I'm not saying that everybody should buy a private property. I'm not saying that, right? But if you are just staying in a very cramped up area or for example, if the area is not very ideal, you don't really like your neighbor and so on and so forth, but you, because of financial reasons, you're refusing to move and you say, I just want to collect all my savings and invest in the stock market and you're miserable all the time. Is that a good way to invest? Frankly, I don't have a good answer for you, but for me, that's not the way I want to live, right? So let me go on to the next point, right? Is that, so this is a, a, a lot of words over here. Just, just follow me through, right? And there's a few caveats I want to put in, right? Is that firstly, firstly, make sure that you can afford the mortgage, okay? So in some of the examples, they say that people buy a $2 million property. So the monthly mortgage is about $6,000. Yes, right? So please make sure you can afford the mortgage. It is really like investing uh, in the stock market, right? Whenever you buy a stock, make sure that that amount that you invest in the stock market is something that you can leave it there for an extended period of time, three to five years, right? So if you're not able to afford it, then I would say there is no more discussion to be made, right? You shouldn't even be buying a property that's out of your budget, number one, okay? Number two is that if you buy a good property, you can afford the mortgage, then you can actually kind of enjoy a certain lifestyle, right? And in both of their examples uh, that I saw is that uh, at the end of the day, they say that, hey, you know, property, you only make 3.8% uh, or even less than that. Uh, so it's not a good kind of investment. But I want to present another view is that if you get to stay in the property and you enjoy a certain lifestyle, at, at the end of the years, after you sold, let's say 8 to 10 years later on, you can make back everything, right? And still profit. 
I think that's not too bad, isn't it? Right? I think that's really not too bad. Because you cannot just look at the return of 3.8%. You must ask yourself, the lifestyle right, of staying in that particular condo or that particular big HDB, right? How much does that worth to you? Could that be worth another 4 or 5%? I don't know, right? It's your call. It's your decision to be made. But I'm, I feel that this is just something that people are missing because people are just looking at returns and returns and returns. They are not looking at there is an intangible aspect, okay? So let me elaborate further, right? I think they are also missing out on certain things when they are comparing uh, the stock market over the real estate, okay? Number one is that they are missing out on the psychological part, right? They are missing out on the mindset part. They are assuming that people will be able to invest in the stock market like they do in the real estate. What do I mean by that? Okay, so real estate is illiquid most of the time, right? You're not going to be able to buy and sell your real estate uh, at a whim, right? Uh, real estate generally will take about three to six months to transact. And because of the stamp duty in Singapore, you can only sell about three to four years later on, right? So people are kind of forced to stay invested. Treat it as a long-term investment, even when the market is down, I think if you're staying in that property, most people will only liquidate their home last. Okay? So this is something that, once again, brings me back to the point about affordability. So do make sure that when you're buying a property, it is well within your, your affordability. And you also have the option of letting it out if, let's say, uh, your finances get into trouble. But let's not go there. But what I'm trying to say is that if you're staying in the property as a good one, and you're, you're into some financial difficulty, I believe selling your house will be the last thing you want to do, right? So that kind of forces people to, to stay invested, to become a long-term investor kind of by default, right? But for the stock market, what's the difference? The difference is that the stock market actually requires a strong mindset to ride through all the volatility because the stock market is not an illiquid place, right? You can kind of go and buy today and sell the same night if you want to. And, and I see co investors constantly get spooked right, when there's market volatility, like right now, right, they, they, will, they will exit when there's market drawdown, which is the worst time to sell, but they will sell. And in fact, in the down market, I think most people will liquid their stocks first. So the next thing I want to highlight is that I think real estate in general helps you to invest better, right, because it is a big ticket item. So generally, you will consider more deeply when you invest, right? People don't just buy a real estate because they felt like it, right? Unless you're that rich. So some questions that I always go through with my students are, can you afford it in the long term, right? And if you can't, then I'll ask the question, will your rental be able to cover it? So this kind of helps you to make sure that when you're choosing a property, you make sure you choose one that fulfills both criteria. One is your affordability, and the second one is the rentability of the place. Okay, and these are the things that I run through with the students, right? And, and I always tell my students, because of the stamp duty, going to be a long-term investor by default, right? Which greatly increases your chance of making a profit, right? We all know that if you're investing in good assets, be it stock market or real estate, the longer you stay invested, the higher the chance of you getting a profit. And real estate fulfills that criteria because it kind of forces you to do that. Now, next point is that property to me is just less uh, variable than the stock market. Because... Frankly, in Singapore, if you choose a broad mass market location, you don't choose those unique niche locations that's very hard to value, and you buy it at a fair price at least, right? It doesn't need to be really that undervalued. Just buy it at a fair price. I think all you need from there on is time, right? It's time for the property price to slowly appreciate as the economy gets stronger, the country gets better, right? And there's really nothing else to monitor, to be very frank, right? Just make sure you pay your mortgage every month. That's it. You're well within... Um, your way to profits. However, for stock market, there's so much more risk variable, right? You need to take care of earnings, management, quality, any guidance going forward, has their growth been slowing? So there are really a lot more things that can go wrong in the stock market as compared to the property. Back to the point about able to stay in the real estate, and I just want to end off with this last point, right? Is that real estate can be enjoyed, but not the stock market, okay? You, you can't enjoy the stock market, you can't just stay in your portfolio. So I must admit, this is not a good reason, okay? Uh, it is a subjective one. My personal view is that as you're growing up, as you're making money, I think money is not just meant to be accumulated, but it's also meant to be enjoyed, right? And with COVID, we have spending most of our time at home, and, and I believe getting a comfortable place 
uh, to live in, to enjoy, is now immeasurable, right? The benefit is really immeasurable. So if it's within your budget, I, and I must highlight this again, right? Because this is something that many people keep harping on. They say that we are pushing everyone above and beyond their budget. No, right? You should stay within your affordability. But if you can stay within your affordability, and let's assume that at the end of the day, you can at least break even, right? Let's say you make no profits, right? You can at least break even. After staying in a condo or a landed or a HDB, whatever it is, for donkey years, that means you are staying there for free for the past, I don't know, 10, 15 years? Versus if you were to go and rent a place or and, and invest all your proceeds in the stock market. The rent is a cost, right? That you cannot recoup back. Maybe the stock market can recoup back the cost of the rent. But the stock market cannot give you the quality of life that you want, right? So I think it's, it's a balance that you really need to make. I'm not saying that um, you must buy a property, uh, a good one, uh, buy, a, buy a condo to stay in. No, no, I'm not saying that, right? I'm just saying that it is also quite unfair to say that people who stay in condo, you guys are over leveraging, you guys are frivolous and, and you're spending your money. No, I, I think people are logical enough to make their own decision, okay? So, of course, I must also uh, highlight the pros and cons, right? That you Yes, you might end up choosing a property a poor one and lose money yeah true but think about it the same can happen in the stock market as well you can choose the wrong stock and lose money at the same time so if you do end up choosing a wrong one and you lose money hopefully the the damage is not too big but at the end of the day i think well you still get to stay in it and enjoy its value isn't it right so so that's that's the main thing i want to share about real estate and stock market is that it is not a apple to apple comparison because there are a lot of intangible uh, benefits you can get out of your real estate so finally just want to let everyone know that the invest with pete uh, property coaching 101 is once again open we have more slots right now all right so if you want to know what are the options that we have within your affordability with good rental perhaps and even right uh, at the end of the day you can still stay at a property for free if you sell it for uh, after 10 years <laughs> apply right now to the link below and i'll see you guys next time bye